Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, it was great in your Law of Sines homework from last night. You guys look like you did a pretty good job with that. Uh, today I'm going to do Law of Cosines. And then I have uh, some material out of the book I want you guys to work on some problems. And then we'll do a quiz probably uh, Friday or maybe Monday. So Law of, law of Cosines. I abbreviate it LOC for short. I don't like that marker much, I'll go with this one. All right, so here's how it works. I'm just gonna give you the formula. Normally in class I'd prove this, but in the interest of time, we're not gonna do it that way. So here's triangle A, B, C, little a, side B, and little side C. It's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem. So here's what it looks like. It's based on sides. A squared, that's side A squared, equals b squared plus c squared minus 2, and then you just do the same two letters again, b times c, and then you take the cosine of the angle you started with here, in this case the cosine of angle a. We could do it for the other letters too, I'm going to move over here so I have more space. b squared then would be equal to the other two sides squared added together, a squared plus c squared, minus 2, same two letters, A and C, and then the cosine of angle B. Third option would be C squared. Let's see if you can think what you do yourself. I'll pause for a second here. What would you write down? Follow the pattern from the ones above. It would be A squared plus B squared. It's the two you don't have, minus two, AB, times the cosine of angle C. Okay? Now you use this formula whenever you have a side, side, side situation, or a side, angle side situation. Side, 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 or side, angle side. We're going to do side, angle side first. You definitely have to have a calculator with you which I left up, that's right over here, I'll grab it in a second. So let's go ahead and I'm going to erase the bottom part here and put a problem up above. You might have to pause this video a couple times because um, this is much more difficult than law of signs. So let's say we have a triangle, and I have one already written out here that I did earlier today. Let's say this is 18, this is 40 degrees, and the other side is 10. Obviously not drawn to scale. And I want to find x. It's a side, angle, side. I want to find x. The side opposite the angle that's given. <coughs> what I would say then is this. x squared is equal to 18 squared plus 10 squared minus 2, 18, 10, and then times the cosine of 40. Remember, this is x squared, not x. So, you literally type into your calculator the way it reads. 18 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 18 times 10 times the cosine of 40. And when you get that, you get 2nd to that answer, 2nd squared, 2nd answer, and that gives us 12.18 rounded off. So this side over here now would be 12.18. To find the other angles, such as y or z, then we could go about using law of signs like we did in the last lesson. Okay. Now here's a hint. <clears throat> when we use law of sines, you always want to go for the largest angle first. Okay? I'm sorry, the smallest angle first. Okay? So this is side 10, this is side 18. I'm going to go for y. There's a reason behind this, which I'll explain in class, but we only have time to do that right now. It's based upon cofunctions. Take the angle opposite the smallest side. So I see a 10 here with this one. So I'd say sine of y 
over 10 would equal sine 40 over 12.18. Now we got that side figured out. You would cross, multiply, and divide. And what you end up with here is the sine of y is equal to, but I have my work here, uh, 0.95. Then you can go second sign on your calculator, second button sign, or sine negative one, just like we did in homework yesterday. Y then would be equal to 71.8 degrees. So then this angle here would be 71.8. Add that to 40, subtract from 180, and then give you angle Z as well. So this is a side angle side example where what I originally gave you was the angle, the crotch angle, so to speak, between the two legs and the two legs here. You solve for the opposite angle. Okay? Then you always go for the smallest angle that's left over. This is opposite 10, so it's smaller. If you go for the larger angle, it'll mess you up sometimes because it could be obtuse. And your calculator never give you an obtuse answer for a problem. Okay? Now, let's do loft cosines for a side 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 situation. I'll leave that up there just for a second. You hit pause and look at the answer. Okay, let me do the next one. This next one's all on the calculator, but you gotta do the keystrokes perfectly, otherwise it'll make them, you'll, you'll have an error. So let's go with this triangle. I'm gonna give you three sides here. Seven, 12, and 15. And we wanna find angles X, Y, and Z. Also remember in all these problems, guys, with law of sines and cosines, you can't use Pythagorean theorem because there is no hypotenuse. There's no 90 degree angle. There's no hypotenuse. Now using law of cosines to find an angle, we go for the big guy. Okay, so law of cosines, I always like to put down go big. A minute ago we used law of sines to find an angle, we always go for the small one. Law of cosines, you go for the big guy. Well, since this is 15 over here, Y would be my biggest angle. So I'm going to start this with the 15 here. 15 squared would equal 7 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 7 times 12. And i got to squeeze this in here times the cosine of y. Now, we want to solve for y. We want to get this y all by itself. So here's where it takes a little bit of work. We've got to move this stuff all over here. Divide and take the inverse cosine. So I'm going to do two steps here. First step is get the 7 and 12 squared over. So I go 15 squared minus 7 squared minus 12 squared. That would equal negative 2 times 7 times 12 times the cosine of y. All I did is I moved these over this way. Mr. Malsum, you need a 12 squared, not a 12. Well, squared there, thank you. Okay. Now the next step is we would then divide by this. This is all being multiplied. So we're going to divide the whole thing by putting it underneath. So to squeeze that in here, we would have 15 squared minus 7 squared minus 12 squared divided by negative 2, not minus 2, negative 2, times 7 times 12. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. That would equal the cosine of y. Now it's all calculator work. Watch what I do, or listen to what I do. I go 15 squared, minus 7 squared, minus 12 squared. Hit enter. If you don't hit enter, you're going to screw this up every time. Then divide by, and you have to use parentheses here, divide by parentheses, negative 2 times 7 times 12. And let's see if I can zoom, if you can see it there well enough. If my camera person can zoom in a little bit, maybe. <laughs> okay. Then when I hit enter, I get negative 0.19. Okay. So negative 0.19 is what the cosine of y is equal to. Negative 0 0.190 is what cosine of y is. So to get y then, I have to take the inverse cosine of that. So I have to take the second cosine, or the inverse cosine, 
or on your calculator, it's the cosine to the negative 1 key. Of that number, negative 0.19, so I go second cosine, and I go second answer, which plugs that in, in there for me, and I get 100.98 degrees. So angle Y equals, I'm squeezing it in here, 100.98. Heck, we could round that to 101. So angle Y up here is 101. If I would use a lot of uh, signs to get that, I'd never get an obtuse angle. Uh, an angle, rather obtuse, uh, an angle over 90 obtuse because a lot of signs only gives you acute answers. A lot of cosines won't. Then to get the other ones, Z or X, I'd use a lot of signs. Does not make any difference if you go for the small or large using a lot of signs because the big guys are already out of the way. Okay? Uh, so that's how we do a lot of cosines to go backwards to find an angle. You do the backwards form when you have side, side, side. And we go forward when we have a side angle side. Otherwise, you use law of sines. Okay, you use law of sines near the angle side angle, uh, angle angle side, and that type of thing. Okay, so there's some problems in your book. Uh, it's a mixture of law of sines, law of cosines. Um, go ahead and do the problems that you see on there, upload them, and then we'll probably do a delta math quiz uh, either Friday or over the weekend that'll be due on Monday afternoon or so. Hope that makes sense. I will try to schedule up a uh, Microsoft team meeting sometime in the next couple of days. If you can make it, that'd be great. I'll probably just be open from like 2 to 4 in the afternoon. So if guys have questions, they can just buzz in. Hope to see you sometime, guys, before the end of the year. Take care. Bye.